A recent report from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies warns of a Chinese tech company that produces genocide-enabling AI and torture tools. And what's interesting is that this company has connections in Canada. In a research memo, Craig Singleton, senior fellow at FDD, warns that Tiandi is producing technology used by the Chinese government to crack down on Uyghur ethnic minorities in its Xinjiang province. The company calls itself one of the top 10 leading CCTV manufacturers in China and a recognized global leader in the surveillance industry. But Mr. Singleton says Tiandi is also involved in producing torture tools. Well, joining us now to tell us more about Tiandi and Canada's connection to all of this is Mr. Craig Singleton himself, senior fellow at the FDD and China program deputy director. Mr. Singleton, welcome back to Forum Daily. Thanks for having me. So a very interesting memo you posted recently. Can you tell us a little bit more about TND and how it got under your radar in the first place? Absolutely. So TND first came to our, our attention as we were researching the growing and problematic relationship between China and Iran. And we started to see a lot of public statements from Iranian security officials that they were thinking about using Chinese AI to crack down on the current protest movement. And as we dug deeper, we found out that one of those companies was Tiandi. And uh, from this information, you're saying Tiandi produces genocide-enabling AI and torture tools for China. Some, some very strong wording there. So can you tell us a little bit more about this? Absolutely. All the information that's contained in our memo on Tiandi's operations was hiding in plain sight. Uh, it was included on Tiandi's website, in its promotional materials, even on the company's Instagram page. Among other things, we examined the source code that is associated with uh, Tiandi's products to understand how this ethnicity tracker tool worked. Uh, the tracker works by determining whether someone is Han Chinese or Uyghur just by scanning their face, whether it's a picture or a live image from a, a Tiandi camera. We also set about looking at Chinese press releases and Chinese government sources themselves talk about the deployment of Tiandi's products and services throughout uh, the Xinjiang province against we being used against Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities. And on the tiger chairs themselves, uh, Tiandi publishes information about them on their website. Uh, they talk about how they sell them to different parts of the Chinese security apparatus. Uh, and they talk about how they can be used to detain individuals uh, in very painful positions often for hours and in some cases days at a time. And you also highlight in this report that this technology is used by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard in Iran and Russia. So that's really interesting. Now, uh, just about two minutes left here. So I'm going to jump to uh, another really interesting point in your report. I searched Tiandi's North American page and it's headquartered in Alberta. So why is this company operating in Canada in particular? What is Canada's connection to Tiandi? It's a great question for Canadian authorities to investigate, and I think hopefully they will now that this information is known. We have a lot of working theories about why Tiandi uh, chose to set up shop in Canada, but we think one of them has to do with the fact that the company was seeking to avoid detection by U.S. authorities if it had opened an office in the United States. What's clear, though, is that companies like Tiandi shouldn't be allowed to operate at all, and they shouldn't be able to, able to sell their products in the Canadian market, particularly as Ottawa takes a stronger stance stance against Beijing. So what sort of steps uh, are you calling for officials in Canada in particular to take uh, regarding these new revelations here? Absolutely. Like in the United States, Canada has existing authorities to levy sanctions and other punishments against human rights violators. Uh, and we think the case for Tiandi is open and shut. Efforts should be made to not only close and sever uh, Tiandi's office that's operating in Alberta, but also to terminate the company's operations as well um, as to target the company's ownership in themselves, uh, really making sure that they don't have access to uh, visas, to potential residency permits, and really just making sure that this this company can't leverage Canada as a springboard to uh, the rest of North America. We think that there is a lot that can be done. What's really missing right now is the political will to do as much, and hopefully that will change now that this information is public. All right, Mr. Singleton, uh, about a minute left here, but for some perspective, what's at risk here if action is not taken by our Canadian officials regarding Tiandi's operations? I think one of the most alarming things that we've seen just in the last few weeks as the Chinese government has cracked down on the zero COVID protest movement is the use of technology and surveillance tools to maintain regime stability in autocratic countries. Countries uh, like Iran, like Russia, like China are relying increasingly on 
artificial intelligence and advanced technologies to maintain public security. What we fear is that these sorts of technologies could become pervasive here in other parts of the world. Uh, and that will just make it more and more difficult uh, to eliminate them, to rip them out of our systems. And I think we learned that lesson the hard way uh, as we were sort of working through some of the challenges related to Huawei technologies, which took many years, I think, for uh, governments, both in Canada, the United States, and parts of Europe to decide that there was a there was a massive security risk here. I think in this case, we have to view it with the same degree of skepticism, and we also need to act early uh, to purge these uh, companies from our digital ecosystem. All right, Mr. Singleton, thank you again for your time today. Thanks. We'll be right back.